Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah, Lilu Nishmas Imi Marosi Rusmas Mordechai. Over here we have Mendy Ellen doing the daf at the dentist. I want to see him doing the daf while he's getting Exactly. Uh, Isaac Zwiebicker, something like that. I'd like to share with you, Ashgacha Pratis. It had a huge impact on me. On Daf Yud Ches, this past Sunday, you mentioned minute 35. Regarding the Mishnah, you saw the Yiddish guy that's all in the head in the intent. Tahira files what you're thinking, etc. The example you use is that if you think for three and a half seconds before you go to sleep, they have to wake up and learn the Daf, then the whole sleeping is one big mitzvah. But if he's going to sleep just to go on a ski trip, then it's garnished. Out of the millions and infinite examples you could have used, why do you choose that example? I literally felt you're talking to me directly, live at that moment, because I was watching this year in New York at 7.30 a.m. I was learning the dive this past Sunday in my hotel lounge, because I got up early to learn the dive before I was about to head out to Gore Mountain to go skiing for the day. And everyone else was still sleeping upstairs. What has Gacha? No, that's very, very... Anybody went skiing knows it's, uh, it takes a big toll on the body. And to get up extra early to do the daft before you go skiing, why did I say it? Because I'm a big skier and a snowboarder. That's why I said it. It's not, it's not a coincidence. I couldn't, believe, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Thank you for filling my day and every day with a geschmack, even on the slopes. Yitzi C. I think he also has a hard time pronouncing his name. He did C. C W I B E K E R is. Swybacker. Her boy, could, could you stop for one second? We have with us today Chaim Snow, Chaim Snow from not a frat, but next to a frat. Hey, come, 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 Lazar. This individual got up at three o'clock in the morning to be in my house really early to watch me from the moment I get up till now. But he told me an amazing thing, and I want you to share with Dailam. He told me something about him going to a seum in the New York area. Tell me what you told him. More than one. More than one. No, yeah. you can stand up straight. Go. They have the chap. Okay, go. What did you tell me? <coughs> What's amazing is that. Um, well, no, I was just telling Rebelli that I've been I've been to Siuma in New York, and I've I I lived in New York for you know 35 years of my life before I made Aliyah 18 years ago, and I don't know what really most of these guys. I never met them personally, but when I walked into a room, especially the one I can remember in Teaneck of about a ho- over 100 people, I really felt like I was walking into a, a family simcha. Like, a, the, everybody was mishpacha. And it's just, I was telling Rebelli how it's an amazing feeling that the, the global community that the MDY has created is really just something that's, I think, unprecedented. Shkoya, shkoya. With that being said, Rabbi Isai, look for your local seum. This one is in London. Right? I Miami. think I got it. Miami. No, this is Miami. Sorry. Woo! Sorry, Michael Benchitrit. Sorry. There's a Galaseum in Miami. There's a Galaseum in London. We have our massive seum, which I really am pushing people to come. There's many, many people that are coming from Chutzlarz, get to meet people like Reb Chaim Snow. Like all the guys that we speak about, get to schmooze with them over Shabbos. Even Michael Ben Chitrit is coming from Miami. He's doing his seum. That's why I guess he's doing it this Sunday. So you get to the seum in time for our seum. But anyways, talk to your friends. Bring people. It's for women also. It's for people that are doing the daf basically only. Bring the people that you know that are doing the daf and have a great time. Uh, here's a, a follow-up for yesterday, I think yesterday, the fifth graders in Yeshivik Tana Torah Vedas. People ask me who the Rebbe is, Rabbi, check it out. And here are the Taira kids from the fifth grade, each one individually doing the daf. Unbelievable. Here, Avi Mandelbaum says, thank you for the amazing clever created by you. It's been so nice to reconnect with friends. It's not about the daf, it's about Yoni Nagler. The shir has also allowed me to reconnect with another friend from high school, the Ran Hirschkorn, the Ram also attends YouTube, but sometimes does Zoom. You get some Mazel Tov. Got a baby boiler this week. Mazel Tov. My name is Eli Melchas. I am Bar Hashem, 11 years old. And I'm a big fan of your shir. You're an amazing inspiration. 
And I took it upon myself to believe Ned to learn Mesechtas Megillah with listening to your amazing, exhilarating, and entertaining shir. My mother did not write this at all. Hashem should bench you with great health, happiness, and to always give the most amazing daf yomi shir in the whole wide world that I wrote myself. With much appreciation, Eli Melech, Isaac Haas. You mom has changed my life. I no longer play sports. The Sensino says that Alexa is an abbreviated form of the name Alexander Shmuel Eidler, Brooklyn. I got so much. Oh, it, was, it came out. It didn't come out good. Whoever listened to it, it really seemed like we bleeped out a not nice word. And people, a guy wrote me a really long, long, nasty, nasty. And he says, I am going to be listening to Shmuel, to, to, to Shmuel Bornstein from now on. That was the end. I'm serious. He didn't say it like that. It was another Magachir, an elephant or something. I'm, I can't do this anymore. Shir like that. It wasn't down like Havschus. Ay, 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 ay. Dear Rebelli, thanks for giving my younger kids occupation for Sunday. They spent hours trying to get Alexa to answer. No, it was, um, it was programmed like that. Mazel tov from all of us on the Siyum. If you asked Alexa, she would probably say Rabbi Elephant, I, I'm assuming. We're still available for sponsors for the trip to the Siyum. Oh, we are, I didn't read that. We are still available for sponsors for the trip to the Siyum. Hint, hint, hint. Yossi Klein. Number 72, the guy, everybody. You want to go to the scene? Sure, sure, no problem. It's my credit card, credit card. The Cookerman, the Cooperman guys want to go to the scene. Okay, do not do it. I ask for you. Somebody else take it. What's now? Was that a video? It's going to be a, a buzzer? What? Yeah, do a video. Why not? We have some. And then we could start learning. It's already 727. Go, what do you have? Start it while I keep on going. Takes me my younger kids. Okay. What's not? You got a video? You don't have a video. Should we start this year? I'll start the. It sounds like a video is coming. Oh, he's flying a plane. Here we go. He's flying a plane. I don't know. No, no sound. He's nervous because Chaim Snow is up there videotaping him. Uh, Raboy Sai, don't forget we're starting with Stephanie Zibomis. Good morning, Raboy Sai. Ah! <laughs> plane, very Shvaka plane. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's basically what I used to own, also, one of those Cessna 182 or something. I don't know, it looks pretty nice actually. Go to, if you want to do bulk. We're Mavish, it's starting a, a week. Next next Wednesday, Yuvamas. Next Wednesday, bring your friends. Jonathan, you have all your schayr, a boy side. Jonathan. Dr. Marty Dauber's in the house. Unbelievable. What a guest. Come here. Marty, for you, I got to stop here. Come here to the front. What a time. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Yeah, we didn't start here yet. So anyways. Huh? You have two more? Yeah, yeah but we got to start here already. It's, uh, we only have a half hour to do amazing that. Fine. Just go to growmdy.com, sponsormdy.com if you want to sponsor Gemaras. Join dafyoimi.com. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow. What an unbelievable friend from Lincolnwood, Illinois. We go back. You know, I just thought about a story. He started up with the wrong man. Come here, come here. Get over here. This is years ago. We're talking about 20 years ago. He came over to me and he said, I bet you, I bet you that you cannot stop talking in shul. <laughs> I said, what? What do you bet? What, what are you going to? I'll give you a roof. I'll give you a roof for your house. New? For one year, I was the biggest talker during Chazar Sashats until 26 years ago in about three months. I never said one word since then. During Chazar. <laughs> Nobody could out talk me during Chazar Sashats. I'm, I'm, Besides I'm reformed. I'm, I saw a tzaddik. And I said, I'll buy you a roof. You can refrain for one year from talking chaza, during the chazar shots. Look at Kava. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a roof but, holes. but you invested with me in this and that. You bought me a roof. Fine. Yishkoyach. <laughs> what? Well, he's a famous anesthesiologist in Chicago. He's the head of the department in... 
All right, Rabbi Isai, uh, the anonymous coil sponsor this month, Lili Nishmas Chai Bas Yosem Sechlitz Chagiga, is dedicated by the Kessler and Davis families, Rufo Shlema for Miriam Esther Bas Dvar Bekarov, sponsor of Paras Achoydish, as is Chus Rufo Shlema Ben Lifshaw, and Rifko Bas Gila, they should be Zoycha to Zerisha Kayama Bekarov, and Paras Achoydish, Shorli Rosenfeld, in memory of my dear friend Yuda Augenbaum, Jonathan Davidov, in memory of Bechor Davidov Ben Panir, may the Nishama have an Aliyah. Shachar David, in memory of Yartzai, his father, Rafi David, Rafal Chaim Ben Sadia, by Joel Rosner, in memory of my mother's Yartzai, Rivko Bas, Rav Chaim Yaakov, and Lizchus, Lubrius Ashlema, Esther Bas, Henya Rivka, and thanks for Rab Eli for all he does. I think I'm missing a sponsorship. What's the name of the bike store in Lakewood? That I'm not, I'm, we don't advertise. Don't live in the love and love of the family. The Lakewood is the Lizchus of the family. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once we're late, we must be late. Here, sponsored by the Lock and Leibovic families, Lakewood, as a schus for their, their families. And also, by the way, he's giving out Gemaras in his bike shop, which I'm not supposed to say, but because he's so nice and he did the sponsorship anyways, I'm going to say, B3 Bikes in Howell. It's an unbelievable place to buy bikes. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. All right. Zok the Heli Gemara. We're holding in the middle of a beautiful sugi. Actually, starting a brand new sugi. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven lines down of Daf Chof Omid Aleph. What I mean to say, we're holding the sugis of Tum and Taira. They're going very easily, Baruch Hashem, and they get continued. So, so we have. We were talking yesterday about a person who. I did a little cartoon, so it could be a little bit more understandable because I saw people were giving me the the look. A guy went to the store, regular store, to buy fruit. What are those fruit? The chulen. You go to the store, the chulen. He didn't get it as a gift for, of truma. It's not kachim, it's chulen. So he buys a banana. And he takes the banana and he's thinking to himself, I believe and I'm treating this banana as truma, as kachim, as whatever he wants. He can make it up in his head that he's going to treat this. What's the difference? Because Chulin, the last stop by Chulin is a Shani. So, I updated the chart a little bit, slightly, just the pictures and uh, somebody, uh, what's his name from Kiryat Sefer, or Beitar told me about this, this, this arrow over here. Shapsi, Shapsi Kohen, exactly. Thank you. A Shani could only make a Shlishi, but a Shlishi is only if you're Truma. So, if you stop at a Shani, a regular piece of chulin, a regular banana chulin, stops at Shani. It can't go any further. It can't make other things tummy. It's done. Giving off tumma. It's tumma so weak, it can't give tumma. But if I treat the banana as, a, as truma, now it's like a shlishi. It can give over a lot more. It has more power. It becomes tummy. It's susceptible to a shlishi. If a shlishi touches it, it becomes tummy because it's like a truma banana. He made it in his head a truma banana. So if a shlishi... A shani, sorry, you're right. If a shani, if a shani, where is it? If a shani touch is this banana, since it's like truma, so it becomes a shlishi. It becomes a shlishi. Yeah, you make it, he's machmer himself to treat it as is. He makes it tummy. Okay, let's see this. Omer Rabbi son Ben Elazar. We have to find the charts because we had a little bit of a um, confusing morning. So the charts are going to be confusing. It's very interesting to, to try to learn and prepare shear when a guy is in your face with a camera pretending that he's not there. His scarf, let's say, fell off his shoulders. We're going to see at least three cases, three cases, of a person not paying attention. He takes upon himself to treat this banana, this fruit, as something higher than what it really is, as truma. And then it falls off his shoulder. And he tells his friend, grab it for me. His friend grabs the, the shawl, the scarf. At that moment, so forget the banana for a second, we're talking about a scarf. The Gemara tells us that since his friend is holding the scarf, he was Messiah Das. The owner of the scarf 
wasn't paying attention, wasn't watching it properly. At that, we're going to discuss it more. Why not? He wasn't watching it properly, and therefore the scarf becomes tummy. He's off his game. When it's on him, he's, he's keeping his scarf at the highest degree of, of Tahara. Now, since it fell off his, his shoulder, and his friend, the Gemara is going to tell us, because why did, why did he tell his friend to pick it up? What was the first thing he should have told his friend? Ask his friend, are you Tahar? I'm, I'm, I'm being careful with my scarf. I'm treating my scarf like, like somebody that's, that's treating stuff with kachim. So I don't just tell my friend, hey, pick up my scarf. I say, hey, are you tired today? Yeah, okay, pick up my scarf. He didn't say that. So obviously he doesn't care anymore. He's Messiah Das. Okay, that's that. So case number one, so that we are following, is this case right over here. A small case. Nafla ma'aparto. This scarf fell off his shoulder. There's a concept of hesach hadas. These are big chidushim to us. He's keeping it, uh, he's trying to be tar. The guy's not even tame. He missed a split second. He forgot about it, didn't care about it. Boom, it becomes tame. Nobody tame touched. Okay. These are, and these are lachas we need to know when the Beis Hamidosh comes and we're going to start keeping tum and tara properly. He tells his friend, pick it up. When his son Eloi, the scarf is tame. Omer, Yonasam bin Amram. I'll give you another case. Avi Factor, come here to the front, please. Dr. Avi Factor, I need you here. Nishalfuloi Kalim Shal Shabos, Bikalim Shal Very interesting case. And I'll tell you a story as he's coming up here. A guy comes to Shul, Maisa Shahaya, a guy comes to Shul, he's a guest in the Shul, and they give him an Ali on Shabbos. The Bakaira is reading. As he's reading the Torah, he looks and he can't believe his eyes. He sees a pack of cigarettes tucked away in the guy's, in the guy's uh, pocket. And he wants to tell the Bakar, stop, stop, stop. Let's get this guy out of here. Let's get a new guy. He controlled himself. This guy's skinnier than me. Ooh. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I'm, here, this is going to be a live case. So what happened was, he asked him after Shul what happened. And this is what happened. He said like this. Our boy said, this is Dr. Avi Factor. One of the most famous doctors here in Mabit Shemesh, dealt with thousands of COVID cases and runs around all to Yerushalayim and everything. I want to introduce you to him today. This is one of our characters for Yavamas. What we're going to have is, I'll give it away here just for those who are listening now. We're going to have the Baldman brothers. Four bald brothers. And they're all part of this year. I want to introduce you to Baldman number one. This is Avi factor. I don't know if you could zoom in. Here we go. Okay. Got it? This is him. Hold it. Very nice. Now, what happened was... Now, what happened was, instead, he thought he's grabbing his weekday coat. And what happened was, he grabbed his Shabbos coat. All right? I want to tie like this. Yeah, MDY, That's the whole out. I don't know. Could you zoom in? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Here, now zoom. Beautiful. MDY, love. That is a great art. We got the best of the best working for us, for you bummers. All right. So the Gemara tells us since he's wearing his Shabbos clothes, what happened? And he put on his Shabbos by mistake. Nitmu. Because, as the Gemara is going to explain, when you wear your weekday clothes, you're not on top of your game. Like you're wearing Shabbos clothes. Shabbos clothes, you know, you go to the shul, you don't want the guy next to you to kick you because it's, it's a problem to clean on Shabbos, your jacket. You're always you're a little bit more careful about what's going on. You're wearing nicer clothing. He thought he's wearing his weekday clothing, but he's wearing his Shabbos clothing. That's what happened to the guy in the shul, by the way. He grabbed the wrong jacket. He grabbed his son's jacket, and he came to the shul like that. He was very embarrassed as a guest. He only looked afterwards. The guy said, hey, you got cigarettes. He said, what? Oh, you got to be down the kav schos. Says the Gemara. Omar Rebbe Lozab and So that is case number two. Also, these are difficult to understand the concept of Hesach Hadas, to, to, to have a lapse of concentration for one moment. 
This is case number two, Avi Factor. He confused it Shabbos Bechal, just for Bekitzer. Going back, a guy wrote to me a week and a half ago, so I'm answering him. When I had a whole list of, of this 26 doiris, he says, that's not how you spell Mahalalel or whatever. I know. It just, there's not, not enough room. And I didn't think anybody was going to read it that perfectly. Like, cut off a lamid, whatever, you know. Okay, but you should go for the email. Uh, people are noticing. Next. What's the next case? Omar Rebbe Lozabar Tzadok Maiso Beshtei Noshim Chaveros. Chavero is not just a friend. Like over here, you have two women that are friends. They are prushos, like a parush. A parush is somebody who's makbid on, on eating chulin bitahara. As he eats chulin, the banana, he's more makbid than a regular person. He wants to be tar when he eats it. So are these women. Their clothing got mixed up in the bathhouse. So they all, both went home, somebody else's coat. It happens a lot of times in Shul. You grab somebody else's coat, you go home. So, Rabbi Kiva said, and we're going to see in the Gemara the explanation, when she realizes that she's wearing her friend's coat, at that moment, she's not going to be Shoymerit anymore if she thinks her friend is Amaritz. She's like, okay, okay, I don't have to watch it. So there's a lapse in Shmira for a moment. That makes the Beged Tame. But she's not Tame, makes it Tame. Okay, so now that we have these three cases, the Gemara is going to bring a question to ask on these three cases. And we have to explain what the difference is between these three cases and the question. You're telling me a tremendous chiddush here. A guy grabs his Shabbos jacket instead of his weekday jacket, it becomes tame because... Yes, you were trying to be tar, but you weren't trying to be tar to the highest degree. You weren't trying to be tar in a Shabbos degree, only in a weekday degree. It's, it's, it's very, very difficult to understand, and I don't even understand it now after the Gemara's answers. It's a concept that we need to figure out here. But according to your logic, what happens if I was trying to grab healthy bread made out of wheat, and I grab the unhealthy barley bread? Yeah, it's unhealthy, that stuff. You know that. You stop, you're forcing yourself to eat it. So he grabbed the whole wheat stuff. Ugh, the whole wheat stuff. Now I'm going to get it from David, from you know where. I'm not going to say where he's from. When he came all the way from California to Chicago for one hour to say Mazel Tov to me, he gave me a gift of his whole wheat bread and brownies, the whole zach. He said, this, this is healthy. Okay. People eat that stuff. Now he's going to get upset. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> I ate it all. He had a lapse in his concentration. So it's Tome. Yeah, yeah, maybe yes. But You don't need a picture for this. But a guy is watching this barrel right over here. He thought, what's in a barrel? Barrel is wine. It even has some glasses on top, wine glasses, the whole thing. He turns the barrel around and says, oil. Now, according to what you're telling me now, that if I don't know, I took Shabbos instead of weekday. I took barley instead of wheat. Here it says, Mephurash. It's not Tomei. It's not so if I grab barley instead of wheat, nothing happened. Why? Because in my mind, I'm still keeping tahara. In my mind, when I grab the wrong suit, my Shabbos suit, I'm still keeping tahara for a weekday. What's the difference what I grabbed if it's a weekday suit or a Shabbos suit? Here, there's no difference if I grab, if I'm watching oil, I'm watching wine. What, what difference? I don't have to know what's inside. I don't have to know what my suit is. I'm being careful not to become Tommy. Why does it make a difference? Now, if we skip, we're not going to skip, but if we skip 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 lines, and the Gemara says, kasha, skip there for a second, that the Gemara is going to ask this question. That's the Gemara's question. Why is it in all these cases, or at least these two, the 
Avi Factor and the women over here. <laughs> it, that, that's just the beginning. Wait to see who he has to marry and his Yavamas and everything. Oh, it's good stuff. So, we say that if they got mixed up in the suits, the suit is Tomei. If these two women, they mix up their clothing. The clothing is Tomei. But look, why is it any different than mixing up barrels of wine and oil, which they're not Tomei. The oil doesn't become Tomei. You thought you're watching wine, and it turns out that it's oil. It's not Tomei. Avi Factor thought that he's wearing his weekday, but it was Shabbos. It becomes Tomei. What's the difference between suits and barrels? That's the end of the question. Now, before we get to the end of the question, let's go back to 11 lines. We're going to go on a tangent a little bit. Now, just this, uh, as, a, as a Misa, a side Misa, because, you know, we're in the heavy sugis of, of Tyra. Interesting story of Tum and Tahira. It says, Becheskas, you watch, you're watching your chavis of, of, of wine. You thought it's wine. It's, there was a guy, um, a wine dealer, had tens of thousands of dollars worth of wine. He put it on a horse and wagon, and he had a guy, he hired a guy to take it. The... The horse driver, whatever his name is, the Balagola, in the middle of the trip, he realizes that somebody took his wallet. Now it can only be either he himself took it from himself, or it's this guy with the wine. So they don't know what to do. So they went to the Noide Bihuda. So Noide Bihuda said, I trust you, Mr. Owner of the wine, that you didn't take it. But the problem is, somebody took it. And it must have been a non-Jew that took it. Then all your wine is yain and you have to throw it all out. So they said, no, no, it was me. It was me. <laughs> For the $50 that was in there, I'll give it back. Okay. So, says the Gemara. You're asking me a question from the, from the two barrels? Well, I could prove it from the barrels that what I'm saying is true. But it says, Vasurim Alecho. Oh, if I thought I'm watching wine. But instead, I, wa- I found out, I flipped it around, it said in big letters, oil. I'm not allowed to eat it. I'm not allowed to eat it. So that's a raya that if I mess up for one second and I, and I wear my Shabbos suit instead of my weekday suit, it becomes Tommy. Here, it became Tommy enough that I can't even eat the oil. I can't eat it. We're going to explain what that means. What could you do and what can't you do? I cannot eat it. That means because I messed up and I thought it's wine and it turned out to be oil, I can't drink the oil. So it's a great riot to me. Says Gemara, I might. Why? Why can't I eat it? Obviously because you had a lapse in your Shemira. No, the reason is, Wow, we got to start moving here because we got some great charts. And a big so you're great. Here we go. There's two things. Yeah. Here we go. If a uh, Ava, just this is the basics of Tuma, you know this, you know Tuma. If a dead rat, which is a what? A uh, Ava Tuma, touches a barrel, the barrel becomes a reshine. And if the reshine touches an apple, the apple becomes a shiny. That Rishon is called a Tomei. Why? Because it has the ability to transmit further. Not only does it receive Tuma from the Ava Tuma, but it also has power in it, enough juice in it, battery, to give Tuma to Shani. It's a carrier. But if you start off with a Rishon, you take this barrel and you put it over, you start with a Rishon, the Rishon makes a second barrel, what? One step lower, always one step lower. Makes it a Shani. The Shani doesn't have the ability to make something a Shlishi, we said. A Shani is a dead end. That's why we call it Puzzle. That's the huge difference between Tomei and Puzzle. I, uh, for Truma, it has the ability, if this apple is Truma, it becomes a Shlishi. But this apple is not Truma, this apple is Chulin. So therefore, it stops right there. What? Oh, yeah. Puzzle means that this became Tomei, and therefore what? I can't eat this. But it doesn't have enough power, doesn't have juice, it's not a transmitter to go forward to make a shlishi. 
So we're talking about a case, says the Gemara. Oh. What? Right. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. Well, we'll go. Yeah. Okay. So now, the Gemara says like this. What it, what he was trying to watch, what happened was, he said specifically, I don't want to, I'm just making sure that this doesn't happen. That's what he said. I'm making sure that a rat doesn't touch my barrel. I never made sure that a region shouldn't touch my barrel. That's what he said. Could you do that? Could you decide what you want to watch? Yes, the Gemara says. So that's what happened. So he did do a good Shemira, and that's why, since at the end of the day, he can't eat it. But he, he, whatever he was watching, he made sure that the, the rat shouldn't touch it. He made sure that it shouldn't go, that the tumma shouldn't go further. He didn't care that it itself becomes puzzle or not. That he didn't watch. Says the Gemara, Omikin in Jerusalem, Palga, could I watch something for halfway? In, yes. But Tanya, I'll prove it to you. Hoishi Yodi Bissal. A person puts his hand into a basket. Basal Akhtefoy. By my grave of the Okay, it's basically the same idea. Let me show you real quickly. Once again, you have a rat that touches a shovel, but he decided to get fruit out of the basket. You have figs in this basket. There's a shovel to, to break apart the figs, whatever it is, a poker, call it whatever you want. I put a shovel in. Now, the, what happens to the figs? The rat touched the shovel which touches the figs, which touches the, the, the basket, which touches the figs. What happened? Says the Gemara, This basket is on his shoulders. And a shovel is inside the basket. He was watching and being careful that the basket should not get touched by Tuma. But he wasn't thinking about the shovel. The basket becomes, is tar. Why is the basket tar? He made sure that nothing should touch it. The magreifa tmeya. The magreifa, the shovel is tame. Ask the Gemara, Hasal Tar. Why in the world is this basket tar? Now forget about the sherets for now. This is the answer to the Gemara. What happens is, just look at it here for a second. You have a basket, you have a shovel in the basket. The shovel I consider tame because I never thought about the shovel. Shovel something else. But the, the basket, I made sure to keep the tara. Ask the Gemara, how's it possible? Are they touching each other? To time I'm a grave, for You have a shovel touching a basket, the basket should become tummy. Says Gemara, no, I'll tell you, you saw it. We're just starting Tum and Tyra today. Ain Kli Metama Kli. You don't transmit Tumma from one vessel to another vessel. Ask the Gemara, okay, great. But let the shovel, which is touching fruit, let the fruit, the figs, become tummy. Omar Avin, and this is what we're looking for. Great. This is a long tangent, 11 line tangent. I see the idea that I could differentiate and I could separate and I could say, I am going to watch my shovel that a mouse should not touch it because if a mouse touches it, the shovel becomes a reshine, which is called what? Tame. It has the power to transmit tuma to an apple, a shani. But I didn't think in my mind that, I'm, that a reshine is going to touch my shovel, which only makes the shovel a shaney, which makes the shovel a puzzle. Why is it puzzle? Because it doesn't go any further from the shovel. It can't make an apple tame. A shaney can't make a shlishi in chula. So I see this idea. Yes, I could separate in my head and say I'm watching a shovel for one thing. I'm watching a barrel for one thing. Okay, you see, you see this idea that I'm watching the barrel for, against the sherets, but not against the Rishon, from this case right over here. Great. Now, says the Gemara, Kasha. At the end of the day, what do I do with these two cases? Avi Factor and the two women. Where are they? Here. How come it is that if I don't realize what I'm doing, I have a lapse in my concentration, the clothing becomes tame. But yet, when it comes to the two barrels, if I will be watching one barrel for wine, it doesn't become tame. Only in a case where I said that I'm only going to watch it against Avatuma and not a Risha, and then it becomes possible. But typically, it doesn't become tame. Says the Gemara. Let me ask more questions. 
We have two very similar qu- uh, situations. A lady comes to Rabbi Shemal. Vomerloi, Rabbi, Beged Zer active with Tahara. You see this Beged? I wove it when I was completely tar. I know 100% for certain I was tar. But I never concentrated to make it tar. I know that I wasn't tar. Tame. He kept on asking her back and forth different questions. He finally got her to remember. My friend who was a Nida, she pulled, helped me pull uh, the, whole, the whole weaving uh, device. What is it called? The loom. She pulled it. Now what happens when a Nida pulls something, pushes something? It's called Heses. Avatuma, terrible. Bad Tuma. So now she just admitted that it's Tame. A second ago, she was 99% sure nobody ta- I was Tara. A few questions here and there. Nobody helped you? Oh yeah, yeah, my friend helped me. And, and was she tired? No, she was Tame. And she pulled it up pulling. is the worst of the worst. She was Mesa. She moved it. So what do you see from here? Listen to this. Listen, you have to trust Chacham when they tell you. You have to want to keep it with Tahara. But it doesn't say what Tahara. She had, the, her, what, what she failed over here is that she didn't keep it with intent to, to, to make it tar. She just knew she was tar. She knows that she never touched a dead mouse. But she didn't have, she wasn't, she had a lapse in her concentration. But it doesn't say what concentration. It doesn't say for what. For this barrel, this barrel, this thing, that thing, this clothing, that clothing. She was thinking. If she would have thought, it would have been tar. She just didn't think. So you see, you don't need to think specifically for a certain device. It doesn't have to be for the shovel this way and not that way. Just a general thought. Anybody believe in the shovel? Tell me. Another Maisa. Same exact thing. Shuv Maisa Bisho Hacha Shabbos Lefani Rebbe Shmol Amr Loi Rebbe. I wove this thing, you know, once it became a mapa, how, how big is a beggar when it becomes a beggar? Three by three finger. But I didn't ha- concentrate on it. Oh, since she didn't concentrate, so she fell over here. Why? She admitted to him, Rebbe, Nimo, Nifsakoli, Shartia, Bapeh. There was a, th- a thread. He kept on asking, what? She put it in her mouth. She had spittle in her mouth, which touched the thread, and we're concerned that the thread is still moist. At the end of the day, you have to concentrate and think to yourself, I'm keeping this batara, but I don't have to differentiate. A cash on what we're saying. It, why would one woman make the other woman's beggar tame? Why would Avi factors Shabbos who become tame? But he's thinking about tahara the whole time. The, the Icarus is thinking about tahara. You don't have to think about what type of beggar I'm wearing? He, he never told the woman, you have to think about this and this beggar. Just think Tara. Says the Gemara, okay. Let's go one by one. If you're talking about this bottom case of the women that were friends and their clothing got confused in the base HaMerchats, I have a reason why they're Tameh. Because each one says, ah, she's married to Amaretz. <laughs> she's not careful with Tahara. So she's wearing her beggar now. She had a lapse in the concentration for that moment when she made fun of her friend. And therefore, at that moment, it became Tommy. Now, also, in the case of Avi Factor, Shabbos and Chal, his name is, today it's Factor. In Yuvamis, it's going to be Baldman. Different person, because we don't want to kill him, Chas and all that stuff. Baldman. Okay. This we need more explanation, but it's possible because he got confused and he said, whoa, I can't believe I'm wearing this. I was supposed to be wearing my, my other thing. And he wore it. For that moment, he lapsed in his concentration of Shmira and he became Tameh. But what about the first case with the scarf? I didn't have a lapse in my concentration. I told my friend, pick it up. Where was my lapse? The entire time I saw it fall, I tell him, pick it up. He picked it up. What's the problem? Let it be, let it be a good shmira. There's another problem. The friend, since he doesn't have intent to watch it for his friend, that's where the lapse is. That's, that's where the problem is.
Veloy, half the shear is leaving because it's 8 o'clock. Our boy side, don't miss Jonathan Stefanski's Purim Spiel on Rish Chodesh Odor. Thursday, right? Bezer Hashem. Now that he's leaving, I can tell you all the stuff he's going to do. He's going to say, don't forget to get your friends. The call at Tenuos. <laughs> he listened, he heard it. Okay. Batanya. This is a kasha. I couldn't resist. I had to show you this picture. Does anybody remember this picture and what it's called? Oh, Chamer Gamal. From what Masechta? Erevin. People are remembering the pictures from Erevin. Chamer Gamal. The only picture I ever paid for. I needed, this is such a good picture. And they, this, they, they demanded $150. Paid $150. It was gishmak. It was worth it. Here, we got to get our money. It was worth it. Prices. It's such a great picture. Anyway, a guy, we had the same sugin of a desar or a boy side, but slightly different. Over there, it was non Jews. Over here, it's Jews. What happened? A guy hires Chamarim and Poyalim. He hires, like we said before, the guy to, 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 to carry his stuff. He wasn't watching them. He was a, a mill away, a long distance away from them. Tarais of Taharais, everything is tar. Sponsored by Moshe Horn in honor of Chewy Woody and the Kale Twins, and sponsored by Moshe Kinsbursky in honor of Brian and Talia Edgar. So, but if he, he, he hinted to them, you could get away with murder. I'm not going to be here for a while. I'm going on vacation. I'll see you in a week. So now we can't trust him anymore. Once he doesn't see them anymore, everything on the animals becomes Tommy because we're concerned that these guys who are Maratzim are going to touch it. As Tais is a kasha, but I'm aretz, who moves something. Now, we know that if it's an earthenware, whatever's in earthenware doesn't become tame unless the, the tumor goes inside of it. Like this, maybe. Yeah. The only way earthenware clean becomes tame is if the mouse is inside the ear of the clee. But on the outside now, there's another way to make this tame. If a zav is mace it, it, it moves it. These guys are Maratzim. You're talking about Amaratzim, right? Look at them. They look like Amaratzim to me. This guy's Amaratz. What does he do? He, he, he never learned in his life. He goes back and forth with camels through the desert. He's Amaratz. He touched the thing. It should be Tomei. He says, Tais is an amazing Chiddush. So no, we're not talking about Goyim. We're Jew. talking about Amaratz. It has to be Jew. We're talking about Amaratz. The, the whole, this whole Sugiya, Avedizara, Goyim, and Yai Nesach. The entire Sugiya, word for word, this is this Sugiya, uh, Tar. Says Taisus, we must say that the Gzair that Rabbanan said that if Amaris touches something, moves something, makes it Tame as Hesed, they had to remove that Gzaira when it came to schleppers. Because all schleppers are Maratzim, so you can never schlep anything. How does anything get to the store? Every can of soda is schlepped by an Amaris from the truck into the store. They removed it for that. Big Chiddush. Okay. Next. Maishna Reisha. At the end of the day, oh, so why? Oh, in this, in this case, why is it if he's not looking, they bec- everything becomes tummy? The owner, he, he hired, th- this is not this guy, he's just, this, he owns the camel. If he's looking, everything is tar. If he's not looking, it's tummy. Why? We must say, at the end of the day, he, he, there's a lapse. What's the Gemara's question? There's a lapse in the Shmiro. I'm very careful with all this stuff. I take all my stuff and I put it on a, on a camel. I tell the guy, bring it over here. Isn't that a la- lapse? A second ago we said, here's the kasha. A second ago we said, my scarf falls off onto the ground. I tell my friend, pick it up. It becomes Tommy. Why? I'm there. I'm staring at it. My friend doesn't watch it for me. And that moment, there's a lapse in the Shmiro. <laughs> what about this guy? He's, He's not my friend either. He is my friend, not my friend. There's a lapse in the Shmira. I just gave it to somebody else. He, li- he lifted my scarf up. He lifted my stuff up, put it on the camel. Says the Gemara, I'll tell you why. I dunked him in the mikvah. I took this guy. I put him in a mikvah. I said, you're going to work for me? You go to the mikvah. Okay, I'll go to the mikvah. So if he went to the mikvah, so even if he walks away and he goes five miles away, why do you say he becomes Tomei? He went to the mikvah. Who's making a tummy? Hey, 
the Hamar guy is in the middle of the desert. He meets his friend, another Hamar guy. He says, Shalom Aleichem. Hey, check out what the guy about. Look at this wine. Castell, 2003. Looks inside. Wow. Made it all Tomei. Yachi, Reish and Ami. So, so he's going to let his friend touch it. Why is the Reish okay? Because the owner could sneak up on him any minute. He doesn't know when he's going to show up. Yachi, Seif and Ami. Maybe he'll sneak up. The bottom line is we have a Reish and a Seif. The Reish, we saying that the stuff stays tarred, the same we say it's tarred. The reason is, says the Gemara, and here we finish, if you tell the guy, I will be there watching you any second, so he's very careful. If he tells him I'm leaving for a month, he's not going to be careful. And it will come from a, have a wonderful day. Hajan Darshin, Hajan Darshin, Hajan Darshin.